Okay, how's everybody doing? So I hope you enjoyed the last series. Uh, this particular series is going to be a short one. <laughs> Don't I say that about all of them though? Well, the funny thing is, is when I do them, you know, I always think in my mind, okay, I'll just squeeze this one out, you know, in 10 or 15 minutes. And um, if I do that, then I skip important features and aspects of the tutorial and then people ask questions and then I have to go back and amend it and stuff. And so if I, if I try to be a little more comprehensive and thorough, then, then it helps people to get a better full understanding because there's so many people coming from different scales and philosophies and you know you know and since I'm on the topic of uh, let's see I got a few topics I just want to preface this tutorial with first if I may uh, one is well there were several questions here there was one way back where somebody said uh, you know uh, it would be nice if you could share a little bit about yourself <laughs> um, okay so Maybe one day soon, <laughs> for the sake of derailing the channel. <laughs> I don't want to let the cat out of the bag quite yet, but um, well, most of you know that I, you know, had a career, a fairly long career in, in film and theater and, and and in the arts. But I've done a lot of other things too in life. I was just one of those type of persons that uh, traveled around, like regionally. I mean, and in careers, and you know, like I did a lot of things. You know, from uh, logging to working in theater in the film industry to teaching at a university in theater um you know i've i've was one of those types of persons i just couldn't stand being bogged down like in one career for more than five years you know or three to five years i guess i just was bored and uh, would move on you know when i felt i had learned it or whatever i just wanted to like a new challenge i like challenges for some people, that's, you know, the way they're wired, right? And I'm wired where I like a challenge. I don't like to do the same thing the same way over and over again. You know, I don't like the redundancy factor. Uh, you know, when we work or live life or whatever. And, uh, you know, life's only so long, you know. And uh, there's just endless experiences, right, that we can enjoy. I mean, life's a beautiful thing. It's also very cruel, too, you know. Uh, somebody made a statement that, um, you know, the fundamental rule of life, apart from God, I guess, in terms of just, you know, the reality in which we live, uh, is inequality. Pain, suffering, with moments of bliss and joy. Like that, like to touch, like no, like no political ideology or, you know, religion or anything can change that. You just have to go through life and you have to, you know, take the lemons, as they say, and make lemonade, you know. And if you think that, you know, you're going to get through this life unscathed, well, you're dreaming. You know, you can try to make the most comfortable, perfect life. Uh, it doesn't matter about money either. Like, I have friends that are rich, comfortably rich, like millions, millions and millions of dollars you know, they come over, I have a, f a friend that comes over almost weekly. He's got millions and millions of dollars in the bank. Comes over, brings his own tea bag. <laughs> Imagine that. He brings his own tea bag. Uh, anyway, we have these really, really cool conversations. He's way different than me in terms of his political um, disposition. and But uh, we share this, you know, very similar theology and uh, worldview. So that helps quite a bit. But anyway... Uh, just to close on the philosophical, uh, like in terms of modeling, um, I just want to say that um, I take the approach to sort of a visual, sort of miniaturized film theater concept. Like I know, like it might jar people the wrong way. Like, you know, oh well, you're not scale, or you're not, you know, you're you're uh, betraying, you know, the guild, or you know, that's fine. Like if people want to think that way, like I've already been there with all the fine scale stuff, like the competition, got paid the big bucks, had the dream job that any modeler would, would, would love to have had. Trust me. Like I had perfect jobs, man. Like when I worked in a museum with an expense account, an excellent salary, selling models for large commissions on the side, loving my job, taking a cab to work, taking a cab home, 
having everything paid for and treated nice and, you know, been there, right? So I don't care about that anymore. I just like to have fun. And I'll build sometimes, I'll cheat scale visually because I'm more after the ratio, like in terms of a visual, like I kind of view things, uh, you know, within the context of film, like I can't get that out of my system. And I also uh, used to build in larger scale, like I'm not talking about O scale or G scale, I'm talking about film scale, like true quarter scale, where the models were huge, because it's the best way to photograph them. So when you get into like, so somebody also asked, so what, you know, why would you go from, you know, larger scale down? Well, part of the reason is, is HO is a real challenge to me, right? Like I didn't do a lot of this in, in HO before I did it in O, um, but not you know, in HO scale or 187 scale. So that's why I do it, you know. Um, and plus the footprint, the concept and the scene and the story that I want to model and tell, uh, HO seems to make the most sense, okay. Okay, so as I'm getting started here, I just want to mention Otter Valley Railroad. Um, and the reason why is, is they have an excellent supply. I mean, really good of evergreen plastic. They have a great web page, a good ordering kiosk. The shipping is second to none as far as I go. Their service is excellent. Uh, I'll give you an example. The other day I ordered uh, some tank cars and one of the numbers represented on the photo wasn't the one they had, they phoned me and said, look, we want to hold the order and make sure that, you know, are you okay with this number? I said, as long as it's different than the rest, you know, it, like where do you get that kind of service? But anyway, Otter Valley Railroad, and they also have a book by Evergreen, because uh, somebody had mentioned about, uh, are there any good books out? Like I haven't, like I don't think there is, like there's a few out there. That one's a bit dated, but uh, they do have it. Uh, if you go to the link down below, the video uh, there's a link there right to that section the evergreen section if you scroll down you see the book there okay all right so um, what you need or what I need or what I'm going to use is a piece of track in this case this is code 70 now you can use code 55 you can use code 70 code 83 code 100 to do this uh, with the 100 though you might have to use a little bit larger channel uh, that I'll point out here to bridge the gap here but the head of the rail when it comes to code 55, 70 and 83 is pretty close and this actual channel piece that I'm going to point out here in a minute uh, is a little bit wider anyway so that when it swings over the rail there's room for it to sit down on top of the rail and not be impeded by the you know returns on each side okay so like a section of rail like this and as you can see I've already laid up a few uh, on a little bit longer piece okay so I'm going to zoom in now because it's close in work so it'll be a lot better to see it up close okay Okay, so now we're going to lay up the first piece, which is going to be the channel, which will be this right here, number 263 channel by Evergreen, okay? You can see the profile there. See, there's different sizes, so depending on the code rail that you use, I find that this one will cover uh well 55 you might want to try the neck like 262 but i find this works good for code 70 code 83 uh, and it's a snug fit on but it does fit on code 100. so i like a little bit of play like you know like uh, if the rail head is in here 
I like a little bit of play because when it pivots down on top, it's got room to clear these little returns right here. Okay. All right. And so that piece of channel is, is uh, right here. It's going to lay in there like that, see? Okay. And you can see it runs all the way through under the anvil here, right to the other end. And furthermore, here's the other side. You can see it, see? See the lip? So we just visualize, we just the channel. We're going to deal with this channel. So we're going to lay that on first. And here's my napkin drawing. And you can see channel number 263 will run on top of the rail like that. See how there's a little bit of play there? The reason for that is I don't pay too much attention to this drawing. It's just schematic. It's not the actual shape of things. Well, I mean, it is when it begins, but when we sand and cut, things change. But So when this uh, piece pivots like onto the rail here, I mean, because of the angle, it comes down pretty good, but you want a little bit of play just so that it sits nice. Okay, and that, like, code 70 and 83 is very similar, like, head rail. 83 is a little bit bigger, and then 100, well, I don't have a piece of 100 here, but I think this would work with it, but if it doesn't, you can go with number 264 channel, okay? So basically what I do is, is I just measure a piece about, like, you know, for this particular one, about uh, uh, 13 to 15 millimeters, okay? Give or take, but I want it to be larger. Like, I want it to span wider than the actual finished piece. Like, you can see the overhang here? Remember how I talked about that? Like, building things proud? Like, this is a really good method, and I'll tell you why. Because, like, you're, like rather than cutting the specific size part, like, you can cut it back. Like, when you build out the ends of things. And you can cut it to finish size. Uh, it just helps more. It's a little bit easier than cutting the exact part to fit, you know, like a model kit or something, you know. Anyway, so that's what I do. I cut a bunch of these, right? Use your chopper or whatever you find comfortable with. And I just cut a bunch of those. And in this case, I'm going to make quite a few. And uh, I like to make quite a few with small parts. Like I mentioned that too, because, you know, you're going to have parts that are going to fail, right? Like, like, like you're going to learn and graduate yourself on each little build. And as you're working back and forth, you're going to, oops, I made a mistake. Glue got into the pin, you know, or whatever. So, you know, this is the redundancy factor that I mentioned when it comes to modeling that's essential. Okay. And then you can pick your best ones. Like you might out of, let's see, we got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So if you get five or six good ones, well, then your layout's covered, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the top of this, like I'm going to put a spot of CA, like in this case, the medium CA that kicks off in five to ten seconds when it's fresh. And I'm just going to put a spot of CA on the top of the rail here. You don't need much um, on there, just a little spot. Seal that bottle back up so you keep that active. Because this stuff will go flat like a tonic, like a tonic drink, right? You know how the first couple sips is really nice and then it sits around and flows flat? CA is the same way. Anyway, I'll put this on top of the rail. Just press down and hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that should be good. Now we've got them laid up, see? So now we can build, we can keep this straight. And level so this is the jig the, the the track itself becomes the jig we use the CA to tack it on because we can go like this later watch just put a pair of pliers under there like this you know like leverage it or whatever way that you want to do it off the tie and just pop it off right the whole thing pops off so we don't need to pop it off yet so let's just reattach that again And we'll just pop that on like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there she is. So there's the first piece, right? The channel. We've just laid in this channel. And it's longer than we need. Okay? Now we'll talk about this lip. 
the derail lip and the anvil. Okay, the derail lip or the anvil section, which is right here, and there's two ways you can do this. Uh, there's two ways I'm going to do it or have done it. Um, you can do it a little more scale, which would be really nice for O scale, actually. Is use a quarter round in here. It'll sit in here like this. I'll show you. See? See that? Okay. Or you can use... Well, in this case, it's going to be, I'll show you, it's 40 millimeter rod. Now, the rod looks pretty good, too. The one I demoed at the beginning of the video was uh, uh, the quarter round. But when you do the quarter round, it'll sit a bit higher, so you need to hone down the ties more to sit this whole assembly down deeper, because otherwise it won't clear, like when it's folded down, but... In the prototype, it's actually worn away anyway. Actually, you can see right here, see? Where the anvil sits in there. Over the years, it's just pounded and pounded and, you know, wore up two, uh, you know, reveals in the ties there where it sits down because it's so heavy and it gets dropped, right? So you can cut that into the model too. It's prototypical. Okay, so uh, the two items for this uh, that we're going to use is... Number 248 quarter round, which is 60 thou, okay, looks like this. And then 40 thou rod, okay, which looks like this, okay. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to turn this around, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark at the center of this channel. I'm not going to measure it because I don't need to measure it. Because I can see, and I have run out on both ends because it's larger, right? So as long as I get it roughly centered. But if you want to measure it, that's okay. Okay. Now, remember what I talked about earlier about, you know, making sure that you rough the top of the surfaces. Because the, the glue, like it introduces a grain and a texture to the plastic. And it just makes the glue far more effective. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is is I'm going to lay in this piece of 40 thou. And what I've done is I've cut the section approximately an inch long, okay? Just so that I can handle it, like I need a handle on the part. Just in the same way there's a sprue frame when we build a kit, like in theory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 40 thou and I'm just going to grab it. And I'm just going to put a bend in it. Remember how I showed you how you how you can bend this material like easy? See? You just go slow and gentle, right? Bend it a little bit more than you need or less or whatever. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm going to take this, this piece now. I'm going to put like a bead of glue on top of this channel. And I'm going to lay this 40 thou. dowel on there. I'm going to grab my trusty number 11 blade and if you put enough cement on there just so there's a bit of a pooling so you can move it around a bit like that and you can adjust it. You can glue just this side if you want first and then bend this one up later if you want. Just takes a bit of practice but we have lots of pieces to practice on right? Okay, so for the quarter round anvil, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this 248 quarter round and I'm just going to keep it on the long length here and I'm just going to uh, eyeball a bunch of sort of wedge cuts. And the way, they, the way I want to cut them is like if this is the quarter round right here. Like the top of it would run like this, let's say, right? So I'm going to cut on an angle like this, okay? So I'm going to hold this down and then I'm going to cut, like I've already cut one side there, and I'm going to put this on here like this. I'm just going to eyeball it, okay? And I'm just going to cut a bunch like that. Just, just nibble off the end, 
straight down if you can. Whatever method that you feel comfortable with. Once you get into a kind of a zone, you, you really surprise yourself on, uh, you know, what uh, the human mind and muscle memory is capable of. Okay, so now that I got a bunch of those, I just picked the best one. Now that one looks pretty good. I'm going to put a blob of cement there. And I want the rounded section facing inside. I built a few of these the other day and I got them backwards. That one looks really good actually. I really like that one. It's a really nice shape on that one. Just flood a bit of cement in there so that it gets a good bond. Now you want these to get like a really good bond because uh, you're going to probably cut a groove in them for the for the arm. Like uh, when you do this piece here, you can either just cut an angle on this piece or just a groove through the top of the anvil to sit down in. Like uh, you would cut you would cut through this so this piece sits like that. Because this Okay, so now we're going to add this approach lip on the anvil on top of the channel here. Okay, so this is going to be 20 thou by 80 thou strip laid on top like this. On an angle, right? So it'll run out like this. It'll just be a strip like that. Okay. going to be number 124 20 thou by 80 thou. Once again these these sizes will vary depending on the scale. This is HO 187 that I'm doing, right? And this might be okay with O2. It just depends on the um, fine scale approach to the subject that you're building, right? It's up to the builder. So 20 by 80 thou will work and I've got a strip here already and what I'm going to do is is I'm just going to cut pieces that are about 10 millimeters long. You can probably get away with less, uh, you know, depending on how you want to do that. And then this is what I'm going to do. I'll start with this one right here. So I'll just lay a bead of cement on there. Now you want to think of the flange of the wheel. I'm not going to measure that obviously, but you want to lay this over top like this. Okay. To that center mark. You might have to readjust that center mark, but it depends. But you can, all this is going to get tweaked with a knife and a nail file. Okay. So I'm just going to go like that. Just match these two corners up. I mean, in theory, they, or technically, I should say, they probably sit back a bit. But that's why we're building a few, right? You sort of get warmed up and get into the zone. And uh, the final ones that you do will turn out really nice. Okay. You can see I've done that with these ones. Thank you.